Hello and welcome to In the Hyperloop. My name is Blake. Today we're going to get talking about passenger pod experiences. Um, you know, we will start with the boring company as kind of the big, uh, big beast in the room because they did uh, send out images of what their pods look like. We don't really know what the Hyperloop pods are going to look like. Um, just saying that Hyperloop pods will transport up to 16 passengers. Um, again, they did release those images of skates uh, a while back, and, and they're still visible on the uh, Render Chicago O'Hare Airport, um, and you don't really know much about them. You know, they're just kind of a bench, <laughs> and that's about it. Um, but why are we talking about hybrid pod interiors? Well, um, here in the United States, we know what uh, train interiors are like. Uh, the best being Accelera on the East Coast. Um, this is pretty much it. You can uh, read more about this on their website, but uh, it includes um, a power outlet and conference tables and sometimes maybe Wi-Fi um, <laughs> if it's working and a cafe car and that's about it. So, you know, it's, it's roomy, it's bigger than an airplane seat. Um, you know, you can uh, talk to your uh, fellow um, uh, passengers a lot easier than an airplane, um, but that's kind of what it is. Airbus, on the other hand, released a really cool video. Um, this is just one render uh, from kind of an economy uh, passenger experience, um, but they are at a trade show for passenger, um, uh, you know, a vision uh, for cabins and it's super futuristic if you have time watch this whole video um, it basically goes into uh, the future of airplane cabins are modular and um, they use AI to reconfigure what the cabin will be like um, not just this kind of static <clears throat> um, you know seats on an airplane but very dynamic of course everything uh, will be a screen basically um, but they really kind of go into each user and passenger and how much information they have on the passenger um, welcoming you to the family zone of the airplane which is sounds amazing this is really fascinating apparently in the future you have to book uh, overhead compartment space for your seat um, which will be fun to do in reality um, the <clears throat> windows um, you're able to take a photo out the window by pressing the button and you have in-flight options and game panels um, for business travelers um, it's it appears to be high bandwidth uh, syncing to the cloud um, so by the time you fire up this little workstation um, it syncs your favorite games and music and uh, etc we're already seeing this with like Google Stadia. Um, the chairs itself, uh, the fabrics can show, um, you know, seat 9B, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, and um, the, the panels and menus on the back of the seats, uh, you know, tells you a lot about the flight, uh, my journey, special meals, ordering extras, no more uh, magazines in the back of the of the seat pocket. Um, you can call assistance, you can send an email, a snapshot, look at your calendar, flight schedule, which is helpful. Um, health, um, I don't know what that means over there, but the health is there and the time of the flight. Um, but then a whole bunch of biometrics. So, you know, your name, your heart rate, who knows, steps, your distances that you've stepped, uh, calories, um, recommended calorie intake um, your bag has been collected and sleep data report and that's really fascinating because um, not only is there a pretty sweet um, tea and coffee area on the flight um, but you can have a sleep compartment which is amazing um, for these long-haul flights this is by far my favorite <laughs> um, uh, to just lie down flat um, and then an exercise area with water, which is amazing. And um, so, yeah, that's about it. Um, 
for the first Hyperloop company that we're gonna look at for their pod, we don't know much, Swiss Pod. Um, the seats are about 20 of them in this pod with two doors, pretty standard. Um, that's about all we know about Swiss Pod. Um, Virgin Hyperloop One really hasn't shown a lot about their pod lately, but this one is from 2018 and when they showed off their Hyperloop pod in Dubai. Um, who knows if this has changed really. Um, the pod is up to 10 people, so small like SpaceX, um, or sorry, like the Boring Company pods. Um, and yeah, you know, a lot of neon lights, red and blue, um, no windows of course. Um, seats have been designed very futuristic manner. Yeah, there's no armrests either, uh, which is fun. Um, yeah, so we don't really know about this, um, the seats and stuff. No <clears throat> storage space again. That's been pointed out in many different uh, commentators on uh, online. So now let's switch to Hart. Hart Hyperloop from the Netherlands uh, released these renders recently um, about their pod. And as we see, you know, down the pod tube, it appears to be around 20 or so plus seats. Um, we see luggage underneath the seat. We see, um, you know, the whole ceiling is one gigantic um, uh, LED screen, um, movie screen. Um, we see a panel that tells information, comfort, um, seat layout doors, lighting. Um, everything is just kind of human scale and kind of uh, tight. We've always enjoyed this photo uh, because it's very bright um, and yeah, it shows kind of the entrance and the portal for the Hyperloop pod. Um, and that's cool. So no, and they say no rush, um, not necessary to squeeze every single passenger into a vehicle or rush to get into a specific one. That's so true. Sense of control. The vehicles will provide numerous features, making pods aware of where they are, where they're going. Um, the features will be on chairs in front of the passengers and on the side in this panel. So there'll never be a moment of not knowing the basics of the trip. And we absolutely love this image. Um, it shows uh, available connections, self-driving taxi, electric bicycles, um, different train lines. Uh, to tra the, and this pod is going apparently from Amsterdam to Paris. Um, different metro lines and different bus lines. And the large circle is where the pod is currently um, ETA 19 minutes and bright bold. That's really awesome. We don't know if this is a Hyperloop map or if that's a Metro map. Oh, it's Metro, sorry. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. Um, and then finally going down vehicle safety. Um, these always look like Viking warships and their Hearts Hyperloop uh, hangs down from the top. Um, the skylight, um, you know, the vehicle is not you know, in light, so contain a skylight which expands perception. The skylight creates a unique atmosphere by emulating the current time of day along with weather conditions of the current location to give passengers a comfortable ride. Absolutely love that. Really like that. So that's about all we know about that. Um, Hyperloop Connected, uh, which is a website put together by Delft Hyperloop, um, they have this article on designing the Delft passenger pod. Um, really interesting. They've spent a ton of time working on this, um, even though they are just a, a, just a SpaceX pod competition team. They're really holistic in their systems engineering of their pod. Um, so yeah, it, it's a really good article. I'd highly recommend uh, you read about it. Um, the context for the design is the year 2040, when we estimate the Hyperloop system to be operational on a wide scale. Each pod is designed to accommodate 50 passengers. Um, this is determined by performance and a trade-off between projected passenger throughput and pod size. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. 30 meters in length, inner diameter tube of 2.5 meters and an outer diameter of 2.7. Um, passenger throughput is really important. Um, the interior of the pods is designed to satisfy the needs of all future users of the Hyperloop system. For example, the interior is divided into different sections to suit different needs of travelers. Social sections suitable for groups of two, four, and six people. Um, 
displays on the walls in this section will enhance the social experience of the travelers seamless connectivity to personal devices uh, so there's Wi-Fi that's great um, calm environment to work in um, the seats in the Hyperloop have a sitting angle that is optimal for both working and relaxing and luggage can be stored underneath the seats um, of course this is European style luggage which is small compared to our American massive luggage that's just awful because it's just massive and heavy that you have to wield but um, the Hyperloop um, and is an inclusive system one of the 50 seats next uh, is left out to make room for a wheelchair thank you for making this accessible heart we haven't yet to see that from other Hyperloop teams um, throughout the history new forms of transportation is, is um, you know people are afraid that their organs would not be able to cope with the high speed more recent example is uh, reluctance to trust self-driving cars. Um, the, it's a, essentially a press ride capsule. Um, in order to ensure safety, the pod is equipped with two first aid kits with AEDs and an intercom system that will always be able to connect to, uh, with operators. Doors in the aisles have been designed to accordance with airplane safety regulations. Um, next to actual safety, perceived safety is also exp is, uh, is essential. Um, so yeah, really interesting. They did a lot of research for this and we're really happy to see. We do see seatbelts um, on the cabin um, and we just love this use of wood on floors and tables, light colors, um, daylight simulation. So good job Delft Hyperloop. Um, and then finally Transpod, they released this information um, a long time ago, but it's always fun to revisit their website. This Canadian group, um, you know, has really sophisticated passenger environments. I would say this is probably the most luxurious of all we've seen. Um, developed in collaboration with Semi Semcom, an international design company, uh, it's really to the next level. Transpod Commuter Pods offers 27 seats and 2-1 seating. Um, it's just amazing. Carry-on luggage can be safely stored in overhead compartments and personal belongings can be placed in the seat backed pockets. They're not getting rid of the seat back pockets. Good job. Um, hopefully there's a magazine or two in there. Um, experience natural lighting. Uh, this is just a really awesome uh, GIF. Uh, yeah, light and space of the outdoors. We see illumination um, underneath the headrest. Comfort at ultra high speed um, leading to the future. I really like the big um, miles, uh, kilometers per hour sign at the front of the train. All the Japanese and Chinese high-speed rail have that clock uh, or the, the counter that you can see how fast you're going and everybody takes photos of that so we're glad um, Transpod's making a big deal about it too. Um, we see that this is pod is going to Montreal, Toronto. Again, the ergonomics. Um, we see cup holders for tea and coffee. That's nice to see. Um, uh, the backrest reclines, large headrest allows for privacy when required. Um, vertical adjustments of the neck, neck rest, lumbar support, pressure, and seat cushion stiffness are adjustable. That's really good. Armrests are included, um, its own armrests and are enclosed at the base, so that's good. Uh, more uh, photos we see seat, light, air, navigate, profile. Um, miles per hour and the time so this is like a commuter oh we do see a mag magazine hyper travel that's a fun cool uh, magazine <clears throat> so yeah really cool um, very luxurious I like the grays and the wood and the lighting the LED lighting underneath the seats um, really awesome renders I don't have much more to add. I'm just kind of, uh, I want to write on that right now. So next is Hyperloop TT. Um, their uh, pod, which is being, um, you know, fitted out. Uh, and it's called Quarto or Quarto um, in France right now. Uh, we have seen augmented windows, big kind of traditional uh, airplane style windows. Um, but we don't know much more about it. Um, cap 
they you know they talk about their cast passenger pods carrying 28 to 40 passengers um they kind of go back into their structure um we don't know much more about the actual um you know design layout of the pod but it's always really good we used to see a lot of information on what the pod looks like in, in the interior uh, but not as of late because i think it's changing so good job uh, hyperloop tt and that concludes this kind of introduction to different hyperloop pods um, layouts and configurations and um, stay in the loop let us know what you think um, which pod do you like which pod would you want to ride in um, and uh, stay in the loop bye bye